So as you know, Mark, I know we've been we've been chatting over the last days about your business model, about your vision. Um, you know that we both share a B of a billion. Uh, I put another zero, actually. It took about 10 billion by 2050. So we need to work together to, ref- to get first to 1 billion, and then we are gonna get to 10 billion for sure. But that, why don't we start by that? Why don't, you, why don't we start uh, talking a bit about, I mean, you've been a pioneer uh, in leadership, in business as a force for good for more than 30 years. Uh, I love to know what is your vision to serve humanity. Uh, I feel that we are very aligned, but what is your vision? Well, truly it's about technology enabling more empathy, more compassion and more connection, which is foundational to the whole trans tech conference and the trans tech movement. And we happen to have a certain model that you can learn about more as Louis and I are talking that's very human to human, but also uses the best of technology. And we look at today as an exponential error. So what's happening is when we talk about achieving a billion people, it might sound crazy at one level, but if you get something radically simple and radically good that grows on an exponential curve for 15 years, it's amazing what you can create. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And actually, as as part of the research that I that I did to write uh, the book Exponential Happiness, uh, we were always trying to identify business models that really can scale up and that can really maximize that impact. Because we are talking about a lot of people when we talk about one billion. So, what, why don't you tell us a bit more about Life Guide's business model? What is the big problem? that uh, you are trying well, that, to- that's beautiful and if uh, omad is uh, handling the the slides could bring up the first slide at some point here while i'm talking that would be great at a fundamental level when people go through life challenges whether it's millennium again in a tribal environment or today in a in a high-rise office building when you go through a life challenge you really want to seek out somebody who's navigated that before successfully You know, if you were 50 years ago, a Kansas farmer and your son went out into the fields and got disabled tractoring your fields that day uh, and came back home, you know, I always say, well, what would you do? And in that situation, people say, well, I'll get my son fixed up medically as best as I could. I go to my house of worship, most people say, and pray. And they say, well, I get support from my friends. I say, well, what type of profile would that friend have? It ultimately evolves that they would seek out another family, another father or mother that had a child that got disabled in a similar way. That's foundational that we help each other, those who've been through a life challenge ahead of you with those who are going through it today. Unfortunately, with the nature of our fragmented uh, society today and fragmented uh, uh, you know, technology-driven society really at many levels, Uh, What we're finding is that it's very hard to pair up and find somebody that's going to be there to help you when you need it on demand. And there's so many of these life challenges that, for example, an employer benefit plan would not cover. You can see this list here, uh, life challenges are the largest cause of employee stress. We're a B2B model because we feel that's the way we can help the most people initially. But, you know, if you have something like the dementia of a mother, how many employers are providing guidance for that? What if your house burned down a natural disaster loss last night? Or wouldn't it be great to be able to talk to somebody today who went through that three or four years ago and navigated that life challenge successfully and had been through our trainings, our qualifications, our background check, our quality management, or operating with you through a completely confidential platform? So we, on demand, deliver a foundational component that's always been essential to human well-being And it's essentially a human to human interaction, not customer service. It can be long-term intentional support. If you have a dementia mother, you might want to work with your guide for three or five years. So it's radically different than customer service. So it's radically different than the support behaviorally, for example, that an app can give you, which is very helpful also. But certain areas of life, many people want to pick and choose human to human support. And we really want to accelerate that. And as we do that, we accelerate human empathy. Because if you were going to create a model to accelerate empathy the most on the planet, 
you put a hundred scientists into a room and said, take a week and figure out the model that's going to radically accelerate empathy. What would that model be? Well, quite likely, and what we've seen from testing is those people would come back and say, empathy is driven by having shared life experience. Yeah. And so therefore, foundationally, if you could match people up who are sharing a life experience, that would accelerate empathy. And our model is that somebody has to have already, who's the guy, navigated that life challenge successfully. So they're not in the trauma and drama of it. Let's say you had a leukemia child, for example. You don't want two people in the middle of that trauma. But if one's been through it and the other is going through it, they can couple, they can connect. Like a 12-step program in the uh, and the sponsor in an AA model. So our model is very simple. And we use technology to bring out the best. And this connects a person who wants to give their gift and be in purpose and be in service and get paid for doing purposeful work to someone who really needs their gift. Yeah, I love. I, I really love it. And 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 as we know, and and, and there is there are tons of research and researchers around that change happens in groups. So I think that shared empathy and or shared humanity, which is at the core of self compassion as well. There is no self compassion which uh, without shared humanity. I think this is this is phenomenal. So thank congratulations, Mark. Let's let's move a bit around technology. Let's let's now focus on. How do we use, how do you, live guides, use technology to accelerate that human connection, that empathy, and caring at scale? Yeah, let's talk about that. And I have a couple more slides, if Amon uh, can uh, call those up, too. You know, at a very simple level, foundational to creating the best outcomes here for our clients is having a network effect. And network effects have been used in so many businesses to create uh, really an inflection point that radically transforms the way uh, a product is experienced. Facebook would be a classic example, but we can go through hundreds of others. And in fact, there's uh, research out there that says of all technology value created in the United States over the last 30 years, that over 70% of that value is attributable to the network effect. So, uh, to get a community of guides, which are a very human component, granted, curated, uh, trained, uh, carefully vetted, carefully interviewed, uh, quality rated consistently on a platform, to get them to scale, you need lots of technology infrastructure to also support the curation of that community. Uh, that could be, for example, not only in the trainings with like an LMS, a learning management system, but giving them data on certain outcomes with uh, clients they're working with, uh, managing and facilitating the community, the whole uh, quality ratings of that. But also imagine in a, uh, a live call, let's say the guide is counseling you because your mother has dementia and you share as a client that your mother has Louis body dementia. But me as a guide, I had a mother with Alzheimer's. Well, Alzheimer's is radically different than Louis Body. Louis Body is what Robin Williams killed himself over the suicide was because it's a very agitated, violent form of dementia. So when I enter that in the heads up display as a guide, as our, as our technology evolves here, I'm gonna immediately see that, oh, Louis Body dementia has all these profiles and I should ask some additional questions about the agitation and also uh, the tendency toward even violence. That makes me as a guide more trustworthy to you, more knowledgeable. Uh, we create greater empathy and connection because the technology has augmented my knowledge in that example because I have a profile on you and the, and the technology is continually feeding information to me. These platform also will auto-generate personalized content for you that isn't just you know a, a, something out of the blue. Additionally, foundationally, think about the matching aspect of this. The founder of Match.com is one of our earliest investors and partners who founded the predecessor to that company in 94, the, the real early, early. And, uh, you know, as we know, matching is so foundational also to so many outcomes. So if you were, for example, uh, we had a benefits consultancy ask us yesterday, you know, so you're saying if we had a 30-year-old black woman who wanted to speak to another 30-year-old black woman and wanted to talk about uh, inclusion and diversity issues, 
they could actually do that and and find a guy like that. That's the nature of the technology platform enabling a match you could never get by just going and knocking on your neighbor's door. And, and you can see here's an example of how our heads up display looks like to a or our UX to a consumer. They can swipe left or swipe right, pick the guide or pick multiple guides or pick a guide that's narrowly focused in one niche area you need help and another in another area. So we plan to cover hundreds and hundreds of life challenges. There's nothing like this that's ever existed in the human resources benefits world of corporations and nonprofits. And it really is a partnership model with those enterprises who want to dream big with us because we solve major problems for them. Presenteeism loss in America alone last year averaged $17,000 $17, per employee, depending on lots of different research studies, that number could be 12 to 20. You look at absenteeism costs in America, they're about 1,500 to 2,000. So presenteeism, being at work and not being fully present, costs employers about seven times what absenteeism does. What's the primary driver of that? The driver is people bringing their lives to work. We are human beings. We live our lives. We wear it on our sleeves. Corporations are losing trillions of dollars because their employee families are suffering. There is no reason for the suffering not to be supported by the corporations and the nonprofits. It's a win-win. It serves their bottom line, but more importantly, it serves their more ambitious desire to be innovators in employee care, to use business and enterprise as a force for good, to feel good about yourself as a leader and to actually take a stand for a culture that cares. Yeah, it's, um, I'm, I'm loving actually when, when we look at the, the whole uh, technology core of what you're doing, I feel that this is gonna be, when you actually work on it and it works, at multiple levels, because I see three things. One, the matching part is it has to work. It, it it really has to work. And I've seen it working. You know that when I was the global CMO of Deloitte, we actually brought we bought the IP for Helen Fisher, the psychiatric that developed the chemistry of love for match.com. And we move it into the match in the, in this case, we call it the, the chemistry of business. And, and profiling, profiling and the way you profile people to understand that we are not the same as other person uh, is very, very powerful. So that's one component, big component. But then when we look at the, the multi-sided uh, platform that you need, you are gonna need a site for the employer, site for employee, site for the guide. You have to be thinking all the time, how do you improve? If we look at LinkedIn, for example, LinkedIn now is moving into the core of human resources through recruitment. So they can move into benefits and they are including training and development. Can, can we talk a bit more about that? Because you have training and development, you have benefits, yeah. you have profiling and matching. I mean, this is, this, from a technology point of view, it is it, a big challenge. So well, that's that's so, that's so true, Luis. And you know, we have a three-sided platform. You hit the nail on the head. They're very insightful. So we have an employer, an employee family, and the guy community. There are three very different constituencies. This is not selling uh, cookies on April 24th through Amazon. You know, This is actually a much more complicated model to curate. That's why the intelligence assistance uh, software platform is so important. And we've got that as a registered trademark in the United States and actually in most countries in the world. Life Guides actually is uh, exclusively trademarked under that in China, India, and other countries too. So we're planning this to be a, a large global play. Yet it's a very complicated model. And one of the real advantages of this model, though ultimately as we get to greater and greater scale, is we have that dimensionality and dynamic responsiveness of the guide community to be able to meet very nuanced, customized needs of different human beings called employee families. And from the guide side, of course, then we have large scale uh, to actually create cohorts, uh, learning management systems, 
apprenticeship systems. We have certification systems. We have gam gamification, which is another aspect of technology we've heard a lot about here that we'll use in our guides, management and leadership. And then for the employer side, you know, that's a very complicated market selling a huge an HR benefit to employers. I, I owned a HR benefits firm nine, 10 years in my life, uh, built that along with a group of related companies. Fortunately, I have a lot of experience. We have a great team at Life Guides too, just amazing, empathetic, caring, loving, respectful beings. That's foundational to Life Guides, the love at the center. And those corporations, not all of them do have love at the center. That's the, that's the sad truth today. But the ones that are early adopters for us, and we've been fortunate to have, you know, people step to the plate and really want to do this, you know, at scale. And they even create outcomes assessments with us, which are very detailed multi-year studies of the impact on their company, on, on perception of culture, perception of leadership, uh, cross referrals to the EAP, um, impact on mental health utilization because we provide this other layer. We don't do mental health. Yeah. We don't do crisis, just to be totally clear here. An employee assistance program, we don't do anything that do, they're doing. We're not tox based. They do the mental health component. We're not health insurance. We don't give legal or retirement or any type of advice that requires licensure. We fill this huge gap where people are living their lives in the middle. And it's so hard. They, they, you know, the average American, over 51% of people in America have under $500 in their checking and savings account. When these life challenges hit you, yeah. you know, like let's say your home burnt down, you don't go through that 10 times. You're like, you've never been through it before. Yeah. You want the help, the personal help at that time. And it creates such an impact on people's lives and their work. So yes, we're, we're modernizing human support and bringing people together. In fact, there's a slide here Omid could bring up on that too. That's just an example of, of how we are, are, are looking at this and it will help us continue in the flow here too. Yep. In here, we're really modernizing human support and bringing people together. But now the problem, the quote problem of technology, we all know this. The problem that technology has created is now fundamental to the solution. That is what TransTech is about. That's what Nicole's brilliance is about. That's what the genius of this community is about. And Life Guides is here to do this in our unique way. <laughs> I love it. And I, and I really love that technology can really become the solution. I, I really like that. Can, can we link technology, Mark, with telehealth? Because I've heard uh, you speak uh, about Life Guides creating this new sector. Can we, can, can we talk about sector? Can we talk about Is that an ecosystem? How do you visualize the unique value proposition in the in the telehealth ecosystem? Well, I, I think that's good, particularly so many different players here in telehealth, telewellbeing, telewellness. There's another slide actually here that I have and we can call up now. If, I mean, the one there that's the XY graph, why don't you pull up that slide and I'll talk to it for a couple of minutes. And I wish we could blow that up a little bit more. Yet this is an XY graph, the top is affordable. The bottom is expensive, very simple. The left side is highly focused on medical, mental health and crisis. And the right is highly focused on personal and human services. So for example, in the bottom right, you can see coaching is very personal and very human, the bottom right, but it's expensive. You go up into the top left, an employee assistance program is very affordable, but it's really only focused on crisis. And it, it does happen to be human, but in a customer service way, generally. Go to the bottom left, you have telemedicine, like a teledoc. And that's very expensive and it's very medical. It's just like, you know, tele, you know, mental health therapy, where you actually include a real human, which I think is a phenomenal model. And these models are growing like crazy now, like teledocs, betterhelp.com to, you know, 2,000%, I think, uh, utilization increase uh, in the last 12 months. But again, that drops into an expensive category down there and mental health focused. A lot of people don't want to have a requirement for personal, personalized human to human support to have to be diagnosed, to have to have something wrong with them. Why should we have to have something wrong with us to be supported by another human being? So in the top right of that graph, in that XY is, is life guides. And that's an area where it's radically affordable, only about $4 per, 
per employee per month. That includes both spouses, unlimited coverage, unlimited, with as many guides as they'd like. Uh, and again, we pay our guides $15 for each 30 minute session minimum, a living wage, and they can earn a lot more as they get certifications, trainings, and advance. But again, this is highly personal, highly human. So we, that's the whole telehealth ecosystem. In the middle, of course, you have a lot of the behavioral apps, the wellness apps, the well-being apps, you know, the comms of the world for, let's say, well-being, which is inexpensive, but it's not human to human. Yeah. And you've got all these wonderful behavioral apps like in diabetes, you know, uh, and gingers for mental health, all this that, you know, are not going to give you the level of humanity here, but fill amazing gaps in the ecosystem. So we've defined a new space and it's called the Life Guidance Services here. Life Guidance Services is about human human support from a guide. A guide is somebody who's been through a life challenge ahead of you, the same life challenge, a match, and who is there to support you as you navigate successfully through this life challenge. And we're finding this radically and magnificently attractive to corporations in America and ultimately the world. Yeah, yeah and you know, I love, I, lo I really love the word a uh, guide. That's the, that's the way we call them too at the World Happiness Foundation and the World Happiness Fest. Uh, something here, Mark, as a challenge, and maybe we can talk about it more, is, is and combined with technology. And, and this is something that we experience that in order to get to sustainable transformation over time, mm -hmm. and healing at some point, which is probably ultimately to get a absence of suffering, you get to get you have to get to the point, and Jeffrey talks about this uh, with the finders, a course about fundamental well-being. Mm -hmm. uh, I call it fundamental peace as well. So kind of so looking at your model, if we go to coaching, that's a hundred plus uh, dollars an hour. What we know is the right coach can really transform your life, sustainable. So how do you see the business model working uh, with the guiding the guiding principle of is not telling you what you have to do, it's showing you how to do is the life challenge that I can walk with you, but it's gonna be up to you to solve. Uh, how, do we, how do you see combine this new space uh, with the evolution of societies going going uh, going over the next years. I mean, it's a complex combination of questions. Very complicated. I would say simply we look at ourselves a blue ocean strategy. First of all, from the famous uh, Harvard case study, blue ocean is where you create a new market, you don't compete. So we're not feeling competitive with anybody, nor have we ever found anybody who felt we were competitive with them. So we're a collaborative model. When when we create partnerships and collaborations with all the other trans tech ecosystem, the behavioral health, the wellness, the medicine, the mental health, the crisis management. We get cross referrals from employee assistance program because a lot of people call them that aren't really in crisis but want to talk to somebody. And then if we have somebody who's called us who's in crisis, we'll refer them to the employee assistance program. So it's it's very symbiotic, symbiotic and, and synergistic, uh, Louis. So that's how we look at the space broadly. It's not competition, it's creation for the life guidance services model. Yeah, I, lo I love it. I mean, we can make, maybe we can focus on this last question. Uh, we have about four minutes, but maybe we, we can expand on this because I really love the way you think of co-creation, the way you think of guiding, the, mm -hmm. the way you think of blue oceans, opening a space. Uh, where, where do you see the evolution of life guides to accelerate empathy uh, on the planet overall? Well, at a foundational level, I believe that empathy, and so does our team, because I'm speaking for our team here, uh, even though I'm the founder, this, I'm just a voice for our Life Guides team here today. We believe that a radical acceleration of empathy is foundational to the world that we all have the potential to build. And that the level of exponential technology acceleration, having studied with Peter Diamandis, Ray Kurzweil for six years, uh, that's where I met my business partner, Derek Lunston, who's CEO of the company. That's where I met Will Bunker, one of our partners, founder of Match. It's where I met 
uh, 20 of our investors uh, is in the exponentials community. We actually won their global grand prize for the company that would be most impactful on the planet. Uh, uh, so out of all their community at Abundance 360, very blessed uh, a year and a half ago to receive that. And so we see empathy as foundational because the power of these new technologies is exponentiating and concentrating. Unfortunately, while it diffuses technology, it concentrates it in the hand of the few at the same time. And because of that, we need to accompany the technology evolution with an empathetic revolution. So Life Guides is playing one small part in that, yet we can play big. With enterprises, our partners, we really can possibly impact a billion people's lives. And ultimately, we want to use our platform in every country, even if it's in a nonprofit model, to simply be of service. We're a public benefit corporation at the core. We are here to be of service and in service of love, in service of empathy, in service of less suffering, because less suffering lets people see and be in their hearts.